I've never understood why the logo for Touchstone isn't a finger touching a stone. This is clearly a visual for a company called Lightning Circle, and we all know it. No matter what they say, it's all about money. You can feel free to turn the film off right now, comfortable in the knowledge that the following two hours will do nothing to contradict this. Great party, Philip. Well, my wife went to a lot of trouble. She called a caterer. Hey, buddy, if you've got a problem with your wife calling a caterer, how about you try cooking for a million people all by yourself and never underestimate the pain of overcoming the deep turmoil of purposely speaking to another human being. This is a very important week for me. I need you here. But you never give me any notice. If this week is so important, why didn't Edward give her any notice? We find out later that the following seven days are the culmination of a year's worth of work, so surely a businessman of Edward's caliber wouldn't leave something like this to chance. Oh shoot, if his girlfriend does turn up, then we don't have a movie. Sorry, my mistake. This much olive toned satin. I don't think you should drive. You're a little excited. Don't drive my car. Stucky is a yes man and spends the majority of this movie firmly entrenched up Edward's beautiful ass. But if he truly has doubts about Edward driving his car, willingly handing him the f***ing keys was probably not the ideal course of action here. I get the impression that this sweeping shot of Hollywood is meant to impress and delight, but all I see is lung cancer hanging in the air. Hey, I'm Al, and this is my friend Joe. Now, admittedly, my knowledge of prostitution is limited to this movie, the Grand Theft Auto video games, and my imagination, but goddamn if this isn't the politest introduction to a shady sexual business transaction that I've ever seen scene. This isn't a brunch date. Gee whiz, this film is more male gazy than that all-male prison planet in Alien Cubed. I don't know if these scratched out faces are supposed to be pictures of her father or previous boyfriends, but regardless, what's the point of keeping them at all? At this point, this is like having a bunch of selfies lying around your apartment. Oh sure, depart via fire escape and forget to close the window behind you. Do you want herpes ridden ants? Because that is how you get herpes ridden ants. Casual banana spying is casual. Everybody comes to Hollywood got a dream. What's your dream? What's your dream? Oh, my dream is a simple one. That the opening seven minutes of my movie isn't primarily composed of opening credits, heavy exposition, and two songs that date it harder than casting Rick Moranis. That's all. What are you, from the press? No, no, we're from Orlando. Florida. Oh, I don't believe this. Do you see? I got tourists photographing the body, yeah. Look, if the body is out in the open enough to be photographed, that's partially on him for not covering it up. Thanks all the same for reminding us that some people are thoughtless enough to treat a dead person as a tourist attraction. I usually like to finish my morning coffee before losing faith in humanity for the day. Also, the Orlando couple seems pretty far away from the crime scene, and those photos will come out graining. Honestly, maybe the bigger concern here should be the amount of civilians crowded around a crime scene. I suppose my question here really centers around the idea that any man would want to go to a bar that makes him think about his d being blue. Gyrating this close to fresh paint. You took it while I was sleeping? We're unavailable for consultation. My parents didn't accept this as a valid excuse when I borrowed their car without asking permission, so I see no reason why Kit should expect Vivian to be okay with this explanation either. Granted, Kit didn't drive Vivian's rent money into a tree, but you get my meaning. This ain't a buffet, Kit. This guy would be excellent at cinema sense. Skinny Marie, but she was a a flake, she was a crackhead. Dominic was trying to straighten her out for months. This whole fight is about Kit using the rent money to buy drugs. Okay, maybe it wasn't for crack, but it still feels more than a little hypocritical to be throwing shade at Skinny Marie for her choice of a pastime. Yes. In a garbage can? What is this upside down madness you call reality? Thank you. You're welcome. Edward stops to ask one person for directions and it's this man? Sure, Dumpster Dan may know which way to go, but he's very clearly busy going through the treasures in the trash. Perhaps do what everyone did before smartphones and stop at a gas station or a fast food restaurant. This creepy asshole. Do you think I look like Carol Channing? No, I love this look. Lying. Call me when you're through. Take care of you. Take care of you. If take care of you is their motto, the aforementioned rent money stealing should not have been surprising. First is here somewhere. Yes, first gear is somewhere back about eight minutes ago when you left the party and drove all the way here without much of an issue. And if the movie is trying to say that Edward hasn't stopped since the party, that's not only impossible in LA, but we just saw him stop to talk to Trashy Tom four seconds ago. Can change for 20? For 20, I'll show you personal. Personally. You'll show him personally. Hey, if my correcting her grammar bothers you now, just wait till Mr. Lewis gets his demanding paws on her. So how is it you know so little about cars? Men are supposed to know mechanical car cliche. This has pedals like a race car. They're really close together. So it's probably easier for a woman to drive because they have little feet. That's kind of sexist. You know your foot's as big as your arm from your elbow to your wrist? We'll pause now so everyone has plenty of time to take off their shoe and contort their leg to match their foot to their forearm. It's true. I checked. And now my hip socket hurts. Movie. You make $100 an hour and you got a safety pin holding your boot up? It's not like she works a 40-hour week or anything. God, could you imagine? Her poor vagina. Close your mouth, dear. An odd request, considering his mouth was never open. Perhaps asking his mind to close the repeating image of this would be more effective. 
Well, looks like Vivian's in for a rough night. Makes you think I'm a lawyer. You've got that, um, sharp, useless look about you. That's lawyerist. Holy sh! did this movie just make me defend lawyers? Gross. Five more cents. How much for the entire night? You couldn't afford it. Try me. Three hundred dollars. If one hour costs a hundred dollars, how does the whole night equate to three hundred? Is this like a buy two, get your third hour free deal? And why would Vivian think that Edward wouldn't be able to afford this? This man is staying in the penthouse suite and he just ordered champagne and strawberries that he has no intention of eating. Thank you. Now we can relax. And by relax, he means take away your champagne before you can finish it, like an asshole. I have a little carpet picnic here. Are you sure you don't want to drink? I don't care how fancy this penthouse is, I guarantee you that carpet is still filled with more bodily fluids and fecal matter than should ever be allowed near a gummy bear picnic. Here we have one of the dizziest seduction scenes to ever exist in film. I can confidently say that because my boner is woozy from the roller coaster ride of sexiness to Lucy hopping around like a clown. I'm sure Mr. Gears Richard is very impressive, but choosing the trouser leg as your point of access is asking a lot of any man. There's always a possibility things are gonna go wrong, that's why I enjoy this so much. Coming from a man who just said he likes to plan everything and is rarely surprised Surprised, I find this statement quite high on my off with your nonsense -a meter I uh, took the liberty of ordering everything on the menu. I've seen more menu options at a two-star Drury Inn. Is this breakfast supposed to impress us? Why? Because the f***ing kiwi? That f***ing fuzzy fruit does not impress us. Also, why put garnish on the croissant plate? Does that read, we're an expensive goddamn hotel? No, it says whoever is in your kitchen lacks anything above a kindergarten level of creativity and has never been to culinary school. Also, also, what kind of twisted establishment serves one and a half slices of toast? Where's the missing hat? Does this hotel flaunt its wealth by discarding every fourth slice of bread in a bizarrely blasé blaze of Baroque baked flamboyancy? How far did you go in school? I went all the way. In a movie like this, it's hard to work out what's intended as sexual innuendo or just regular conversation. So here's a sin for making me second guess the validity of my college girlfriend and name of my sex tape jokes. This doesn't come easy. Sorry, that actually was the name of my college girlfriend's sex tape. Your folks must be really proud, huh? Talking with your mouth full, even while adorable, is still a sin. I don't like you going alone. Well, I just think it'd be better if you, if you went with a date, you know, keep it social. True, so when the time comes for Edward to have dinner with the feisty old man who could sue him, wouldn't it be wise to bring along a lawyer rather than a date? You just leave it all up to me. We aren't the first to say this, and we won't be the last, but Julia Roberts is an absolute joy to watch in this movie. How could you not fall in love with her? Vivian? I have a business proposition for you. However, despite this film being lauded as a touchstone in the romance genre, I can't get past the fact that at its bones, it's a story about a wealthy, patronizing businessman rescuing a struggling prostitute and polishing her with pretty clothes so he can parade her around social gatherings. Yes, this film does an excellent job of showing Vivian as an empowered young woman who sets her own rules and stands by them, but this all still feels icky. I'd like to hire you as an employee. That he can f See, this is why you get everything in writing and read the fine print. I mean, while she appears to be super into the arrangement, I'm just pointing out that most employee relationships do not include the expectation of sexual favors. Don't need any romantic hassles this week. Says the man who dives headfirst into a romantic hassle that lasts a week. Just be honest, you want a sex goddess for the week. We'll respect you for it. Promise. Baby, I'm gonna treat you so nice, you're never gonna wanna let me go. Sassy foreshadowing for sassying? 3,000 for six days. And Vivian, I will let you go. He will not. I called and called. Where were you last night? What is the point of checking in with each other at regular intervals if you don't do dick about it when you can't get through? Vivian has slept in, had breakfast, found a new job, and enjoyed a f***ing bath before checking in with her AWOL roommate. For all she knows, Kit could be in the dumpster with Skinny Marie. Where do I go for the clothes? I find it hard to believe that a local person who just last night instantly gave Edward directions to the hotel that looks upon Rodeo Drive itself would somehow not know about the shopping experiences awaiting the wealthy on Rodeo Drive. Look, I got money to spend in here. I don't think we have anything for you. You're obviously in the wrong place. Please leave. These assholes take the art of assholery to new heights, but why is Vivian surprised? She isn't naive, so wouldn't she expect this reaction in a shop like this, regardless of how much money she comes in with? Also, who wants to buy expensive clothes from a store that decorates with cacti? One accidental step to the left or the right of the door and that pricey outfit is trashed. These horrible, judgmental women have done her a service. Edward. 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 Edward, uh, he knows me. Holy convenient bellboy, Batman. Now, I'm assuming that you're a relative? Yes. Why use this relative analogy? 
Why not go with a family friend or business associate or literally anything less incesty? She's the niece of a very special guest. We now interrupt this riveting love story with a heart-pounding adrenaline injection of industrial property takeovers. Uh, sometimes there are three times the salad fork. This guy is a d First he says the middle fork is the salad fork. And it clearly has four times. She just said she was confused about the goddamn silverware. You're not helping anyone. Also, movie has time for this. God, dining in the 90s must have been horrible. A radish surrounded by cucumbers that have been set upon by cheap white bread smeared with pate and topped with an olive stuffed olive? This is a grown up PB and J on a shiny goddamn plate and I want my money back. You know, there was a time when we built ships the size of cities. Men like my grandfather made this country. Who ordered this? First off, she knows exactly who ordered because not five minutes ago, Mr. Male Dominance said, Shall I order for you? Second, does knowing who ordered make them any more palatable? Uh, who ordered the deep fried turmeric testicles? Richard Gere? Good enough for me. What I would like is for you to get down from there. You're making me very nervous. If they're on the top floor and that balcony leans to a sheer drop, why is sitting up there even an available option? Why isn't the hotel railed off or made the wall higher? I get this is a fancy place, but surely this penthouse has seen its fair share of wild parties. This low wall is just asking for a drug-induced gravity-assisted ride to the lobby. When did he die? Last month. Do you miss him? I hadn't spoken to him in 14 and a half years. So, no? Veg out. Yeah. Be still like vegetables. Lay like broccoli. Why stop there? Cuddle like carrots. Rest like gratitudes. Pet like peas. Canoodle like cucumbers. Embrace like eggplant. Like fennel. I didn't know you played. What? Do you mean hobbies and pastimes didn't come up in the 12 sentences you've said to each other in the last 24 hours? Shocking! Gentlemen. Would you mind leaving us, please? you, dude. You've got the entire penthouse for these shenanigans. I don't care how big your piano boner is, there's no reason to kick these guys out from their smoke break. They were mean to me. Mean to you? Yay! Daddy to the rescue! I'm sorry, but this marching Vivian back to the shops and paying off the shopkeepers to make sure they're nice to her has a definite overprotective father vibe. Maybe it's Vivian's innocent naivete about how Edward's world works, or maybe it's Edward's commanding confidence. Either way, icky! Okay, stop fidgeting. Get rid of your gum. Where are these clothes? No, not like that. Sit there. No, not there. There. Use that fork. No, not that fork. That fork. God damn, is Vivian allowed any personality? Besides, isn't the whole point of this exercise to prove that people don't give a damn how you act as long as you've got a loaded credit card? Exactly how obscene an amount of money were you talking about? Just profane or really offensive? Really offensive. I like him so much. You won't when you realize that Vivian only walks out of the store with fewer bags than I leave with when I go to the grocery store. And sure, maybe some were taken directly to the hotel, but then why would she carry any at all? And when she leaves at the end of the movie, she's barely carrying more than this, which is hardly a really offensive amount of anything. We can't play the titular song, but trust me when I say roll credits. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big Huge. This may well be one of the most satisfying f yous in the history of cinema. And it would be a big, huge sin to not acknowledge it. This wonky candle. Any couple who has attempted the shared bathtub experience will attest that while romantic, it actually winds up being an awkward game of, ow, oh, you're crushing my boob, and hey, get your toe out of there. And so I run on the internet. No one will bathe with me unless I pay them. Watch where you're walking, because if you step in something, we're not going back in the car. And God forbid simply taking off your shoes to return to the car as an option. Nope, if you step in horse sh we are walking all the way home and burning our shoes in our wealthy fireplace. All right. You look great. You look like a lady. God damn it, man. She's always looked like a lady. Just maybe not what your perception of a lady is. Gah! Listen, maybe um, you and I could get together sometime after Edward leaves. Stucky survives this. Also, Stucky is doing this in clear view of everyone, including his wife. Either he doesn't care that people think he's a creepy sleazeball, or everyone is already aware of this fact and still tolerates his existence. You're not my toy. I know you're not my toy. Vivian! Vivian! I'm speaking to you. Come back here. Speaking to your toy employee like a child. And you are my employee. Show us the W-2! Carrying $3,000 cash around for no reason. I saw you talking to David Morris. I didn't like it. We were just talking. I didn't like it. Edward mistakes possessive and toxic behavior for a valid defense of his actions, and Vivian accepts it. You hurt me. Yes. Don't do it again. Ah, yes. Set a ridiculous standard. I know so many relationships that never experience hurt at all. Super realistic. I had a date. With the hooker? 
Be careful, Philip. Yeah, Philip, be more careful with your instinct that your business partner is acting very differently during a crucial business deal. Sure, Philip is a great A asshole. We know that because we've all seen this movie. So this feels like an important moment when Edward is stepping more directly into the hero role. But Philip is asking the right questions here. Okay, maybe don't say the hooker part so loud and in front of Bella, the office gossip. But someone should check in with Mr. Knight in Shining Armor to be sure he's still grounded in reality a little bit. Does that look okay? Mm. Hmm? Something's missing. Vivian arrives in this stunning dress, and all he has to say is, there's something missing? I don't care if he intends on adding the goddamn crown jewels to this outfit. There's something missing is not an appropriate response. How about saying, isn't this employer-employee relationship a bit confusing? We probably shouldn't go to this opera that has nothing to do with anything that's going on this week, or something. Oh! Slamming your co-worker's fingers without consent. If I forget to tell you later, I had a really good time tonight. What a great idea! Get the bullshit at the end of the night, all buttoned up at the beginning. Let's try it. <clears throat> if I forget to tell you later, I had a terrible time watching this movie and have sentenced it to be pretty boring with an additional 69 cents. Oh, I understand the message here. First time we see Vivian enter the hotel, the people look at her body and clothes, deem her a slutty whore of a woman, and dismiss her humanity with a scoff. But now that she's in a fancy dress, it's totally okay to covet her female form, see her as a viable person of society, and justify her being worthy of love. <sighs> the love story for the ages. When you're not fidgeting, you look very beautiful. Yeah, so stop being a normal person with little quirks and mold into the perfect version of my woman so that I can love you. Very tall. To be fair, she was just as tall in her hooker boots, but the difference in height is more noticeable now that you're trying to fit her into your ideal woman box and squelch any possibility of her bruising your delicate appearance-based ego. Whoa, discount Stan Lee! Now I know this is technically a Disney movie, but come on, guys. Was this cameo really necessary? People's reactions to opera the first time I see it is very dramatic. They love it, they will always love it. If they don't... They may learn to appreciate it, but it will never become part of their soul. Oh, f you, that's not true. What I find interesting about this scene is that we're focused so much on whether or not Vivian has a soul and loves opera. We see her react to the emotions of what she's watching and are assured on yet another level that this rich white man can appropriately invest in her as a human. But what about him? He sat there like a stone, emotionless and empty. Why do we want Vivian to invest herself into him? Because he's wealthy? Watching footage of the World Trade Center will always be a distracting experience in every film where they still exist. But don't think for one moment that I'm not wondering why they appear in this movie, which takes place over the course of one week in California. Maybe it's here as a reminder that the end of the movie is approaching and Edward is returning to New York, but that comes up in the dialogue. We don't need to see New York to remember that it's there. We need to see another goddamn sex scene. There's a snap dog vendor over there. Do you have any money? The man pulled $3,000 cash out of his wallet. Yes, he has money. You can leave some money by the bed when you pass through town? Vivian, it really wouldn't be like that. On the breakfast menu this morning, we have strawberries and croissants. But may I be so bold as to recommend the third act conflict cliche? When I was a little girl. Unrealistic relationship. I would pretend I was a princess trapped in the tower by a wicked queen. Wow, Disney sure did sink their mousy incisors into this one at the 11th hour, didn't they? But never in all the time that I had this dream did the knight say to me, come on, baby, I'll put you up in a great condo. And you clearly need to find yourself a knight with a credit card. Wait, was the condo a bad thing in this analogy? Wait here, please. Watch her. And in a spectacular return to form, here's Barney being an absolute jerk whistle because the woman in question isn't dressed like Cinderella. I'm not so concerned about me, but the people who are working for me. It's not a problem. They'll be taken care of. I'm sure Stucky will forgive me if I don't take this statement at face value. I detected more sincerity from the nurse who said this won't hurt a bit that one time I had to have a catheter put in. She got there in the end, and so I was told I passed out. Mr. Morris, I think we can do something very special with your company. I think we can leave the details up to the others. If this is something that Edward has seemingly come up with on the spot, how the f*** is anyone going to be able to deal with the details? Okay, maybe he had some behind-the-scenes meetings on his side of the table, which obviously excluded Stucky, but there's no chance that Morse's team will have a clue what's going on or how to proceed. And right now, I am really pissed, you know? Right now, I am just freaking out. We have no intention of showing what follows, but rest assured, any doubts that remained of Philip Stuckey's worthiness to the title of scumbag of the century are firmly punched out of his face with a Richard Gere-shaped fist. I heard about what you did with Morris. It was a business decision. It was good. Well, what Vivian knows came from Stuckey, and all he said was that Edward blew a billion-dollar deal. She may have her suspicions, but for all she knows, Morse found the money elsewhere or ended up landing the naval contracts, as opposed to any gesture of goodwill on Edward's part. I know about wanting more. I invented the concept. He most certainly did not. Impossible relationships. My special gift 
These impossible relationships. Except this one is in no way impossible. It's as easy as climbing up her fire escape and driving off into the sunset playing Italian opera, as evidenced by the climax. I want you to call maintenance and have them deal with this. You must delegate authority. That's really more about delegating workload than it is authority. It must be difficult to let go of something so beautiful. Well, the necklace doesn't seem to be his style. We haven't seen him wear jewels like this the entire movie. Oh, that's a metaphor. Vivian hears a car horn and has some sort of divine instinct that this honk is somehow different than the thousands of honks she must hear every f***ing day while living off Hollywood Boulevard. So what happened after? He climbed up the tower and rescued her. They both tested for sexually transmitted diseases and live warp free ever after? She rescues him right back. This is adorable and about as romantic as it gets, but has anything actually changed at all? We could have wrapped this up a half an hour ago and saved like 50 cents. Shut up and stop being so dead inside? I most certainly will not. <laughs>